Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the people control for Nintex Forms for Nintex Workflow Cloud. Now, this is still being um, rolled out, it's still in preview at the moment, so you may have access to it or you may not yet. Um, so this is a preview version. So to get started, click on Design Form from Nintex Workflow Cloud and you can see I've already got people control here. Uh, if you don't have one, drag it on from the toolbox if you have access to it. Now, if you don't have access, it just won't show up in the toolbox. Now I've got two here because I can have one, a singular, a one or multiple. So I'm going to make this one multiple. Yep, that's right, multiple and single. Let's call it single. Okay, so there we go, that's better. So single or multiple, so pretty simple sort of stuff. If I type in uh, you in here and I can select someone, if I put in Josh, it will replace the person I just selected. Whereas if I come into here, um, and now it turns into a like a pill shape where I can keep selecting people. So at the, the simplest instance, that's the difference between the two. But there's some fundamental reasons why I'm explaining single and multiple. Now, these two will always return a collection. Now, if you're not familiar with a collection, that is uh, like an array, if you're familiar with that term. So just to look at this a bit further, if you come to variables, add a variable, and we'll start showing how we can work with these collections and also the um, how you know they're a collection. So if you come to the variables here, you can see people multiple, people single, and they report as a collection regardless of even if the single is only returning a single object, not an array. Now we do this because in workflow, if you were to, sorry, in forms, if you were to put on a people picker and, and a, as a single and it was returning an object, then later that control you set to multiple, it will send back a collection. So then you could have used that variable in multiple different spots in your workflow and it would have broken in all those different spots. So what we've chosen to do is standardize the the data communication type to a collection, regardless of single or multiple, to make sure that you never break your workflow. And it's a little bit of overhead here, but it's it's easier to manage here than perhaps going through 10, 50 different actions, updating all those actions for those different variable changes. So there's a little bit of work, but let's have a look at how I would send out the um, the first name or the, or the person's first name of the people single. So first I can go to people and select people single and then select uh, first name. Now that is still returning a collection, even though it's a single object, it's wrapped in a collection. So what we can then do is to convert to string. So wrap that into convert to string and it's selected the collection of first name. So as we saw before, if we said, um, so we do something like this, um, um, people single first name, you see it's still a collection, but realistically it's got only one item in the collection. So now we've got that, we're going to call this var first name and set that as text and go create. So we come back to the designer and below the, the single people picker, we'll put a uh, label. Then we'll come through to here, click insert, and we'll use our, our new variable we've just created. We'll come to preview. And if I put in my name and I select, now, as you can see, it's actually returned the first name of that person or me basically. So you could grab um, anything you wanted really. So anything that's inside this object. So you've got uh, first name, last name, full name, email, ID and source. So ID can be different to the email address. Um, source is where that authentication, where that person's coming from. Is it coming from NWC or is it coming from Azure Active Directory and those sort of things. Now I have had the question can we get more properties? Now that is something we're considering for a later date, most likely solved through what we call data source variables. So that's for a different video for a different day. So now that we've got that collection for a single, that's an easy way of doing it. What if we wanted the people, people multiple? Now it's always gonna be a collection, um, people multiple, and we'll say first name. Since it's always gonna be a collection, we can still convert to string but its shape is different. So we do uh, choice multiple, we'll call this, uh, it doesn't really, not really matter about the name. So go ahead and update that, go to preview. And now we, we know the label's there, so we're just gonna reuse that for the moment. Let's come to Ewan and then we go Josh. And as you can see here, it's comma separated. So as I keep adding more people, let's add Kate. Um, it keeps adding the people. So 
it's it's you can see a list of people. You could probably do some regex on that. You could um, um, some some string manipul manipulation if you wanted to. So there's a few different options there, but probably if you're getting a collection, you probably don't want it in that format, but you most likely would want this for the single. So that's something to keep in mind. They always return a collection, both of them. So then how do you go and use this in workflow? So once you go apply changes, um, your start event form variables will be passed through here. So a form variable is any control that you've put on the canvas or any variable you've created in the variables tab. So here we go here. So form variables and we've got people single, people multiple, and that, as I mentioned before, a variable you've created in the variables tab. So you've got people single and multiple. How do you how do you go ahead and use those? Because you might want first name or last name or email or whatever it might be. How do you get to these? Even if it's a single, they're they're still in a collection. So what you want to do is go for each, I think it's a for each loop. Uh, loop for each, sorry. So first you're going to put your collection into the for each loop. So you come through to here, your start event, workflow initiator. Uh, sorry, not workflow initiator, form variables. And I'm going to say people single will do for the moment. So I'm going to insert that, just that collection. None of these properties, just the collection. Then what I want to do is, uh, let me think. I want to send a um, send an email, for instance. So I might want to send an email. And so recipient's email address, I'll use the people picker of the, um, so the people control property that we saw before. So Rather than start event, where you come through and go form variables, people single, I can't get to that because it's a collection. I actually come through for the loop for each because when I use a loop for each action in workflow, it immediately explodes out and says, okay, well, I'm in, you know, I'm inside the collection now. Which one am I up to? So it iterates through the collection of, of, um, of objects. And so it, you can get the index of it's up to zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth or just the current item. So then I can drill down through the current item and now I've got the single properties. So then I could click on insert and I could say, well, reply to whoever and I could put a subject of um, hello, uh, first name and so on and so forth. And so you get the idea. So that's how you can grab the single properties out of the uh, people single or uh, people single control and it could be applicable for the um, the multiple as well. So it's really the same thing. So let's change it up and let's do, rather than people single, remove that. And we'll go to um, insert, uh, insert, where have we gone? Oh, uh, start event, form variables, people multiple. So the same things applies. Just put your collection in there from the people control. And then once you come through to here and you select email, it's the same process. You come through, loop for each, loop for each current item and get the properties that you want and then put them through to the email or the SharePoint um, list update ac action or whatever it might be. So regardless of single or multiple, always know that you're iterating through the collection. So I hope you find that useful. That's the people control for Nintex Workflow Cloud. It, this is a preview and we are testing with certain customers. So uh, if you are interested and you have my email address, which you might have seen through this video, certainly let me know, reach out to me and let me know that you'd like to be part of the preview. And uh, yeah, we should be releasing this soon. Cheers.